birçok indirgenemez komplekste gerçeklerinden bir diğer örnek de şöyledir. En basit bir canlı oluşumu için en az 250 farklı proteinin aynı anda mevcut olması şarttır. Her bir proteinin ömrü sadece 2-3 saniyedir. Proteinlerin oluşması için DNA, RNA, ribozom ve enzimler gereklidir. DNA, RNA, ribozom ve enzimlerin oluşması için de proteinler gereklidir. Ve eğer hücre ortamı olmazsa bunların hiçbiri de işe yaramaz, hepsi hemen yok olur. Milyarlarca yıl hücre oluşumunu veya birbirlerinin oluşumunu bekleyemezler. Profesör Stephen Meyer de tek bir protein tesadüfen ve bir evrim sürecinde kademe kademe parça parça oluşma ihtimali imkansızlığını şu sözlerle ifade etmiştir ki bunlar bilimsel gerçeklerdir. Tek bir protein oluşması için DNA gerekir. Protein olmadan DNA oluşamaz. DNA olmadan protein oluşamaz. Protein olmadan protein oluşamaz. Tek bir protein oluşması için 60 ayrı protein gerekir. Bu proteinlerin bir tanesi bile eksik olsa protein var olamaz. Ribozom olmadan protein oluşmaz. RNA olmadan da protein oluşmaz. ATP olmadan protein oluşmaz. ATP'yi üretecek mitokondri olmadan da protein oluşmaz. Hücre çekirdeği olmadan protein oluşmaz. Sitoplazma olmadan da protein oluşmaz. Hücredeki organellerden bir tanesi eksik olsa protein oluşamaz. Hücredeki bütün organellerin var olması ve çalışması için de proteinler gereklidir. Bu organeller olmadan da hiçbir şekilde protein olmaz. Bu sistem bir arada çalışmak zorunda olan iç içe bir sistemdir. Biri olmadan diğeri olamaz. Tek bir parçası var olsa bile sistemin diğer parçaları olmadan bu parça hiçbir işe yaramaz. Kısacası bir proteinin var olması için hücrenin tamamı gerekir. Hücre bugün incelediğimiz ve çok az bir kısmını anlayabildiğimiz mükemmel kompleks yapısı ile aynı anda var olmadığı sürece tek bir tane bile protein meydana gelemez. Bu parçaların hepsinin aynı anda var edilmesine ise evrim denilemez. Bu varoluş çok açıktır ki evrim tanımıyla ve öğretileriyle taban tabana zıttır. Peki ne denilir? Tüm parçaların aynı anda mükemmel halleriyle varoluşu apaçıktır ki yaratılıştır ve yaratıcının varlığını, birliğini, bir anda hepsini birden yaratabilme gücünü, ilmini ispat etmeye yeter. Reagent order is essential. Reagent addition order. You can't just say all the reagents mixed together and you get what you got. You're making a cake. You got your flour, you got your milk, you got your eggs. You say, well, I think I'll just add the frosting now. <gülüyor> no, there's an order to this. This is real. This is what you do in chemistry. Things have to be added at certain times. You can't just add it whenever you want to. Reagent addition order at proper timing is critical. The parameters for temperature, pressure, solvent, light, no light, pH, atmospheric gases have to be carefully controlled in order to build complex molecular structure. There's no way around it. This is what's needed. <clears throat> you have to have characterization at each step. This is hard to do. Chemists have to characterize things at each step because you have to make sure what you've got before you can go on to the next step. How does nature characterize? Well, right now, biological systems characterize things by every time it makes something, there's an enzyme that checks that structure. If it's not the right structure, there, it, there are other enzymes that come and chop that up into smaller pieces and try rebuilding it again. You get a mistake in, in the DNA. You have enzymes that run up and down the DNA, find this mistake, excise it, and then stick in the right base there. But in a pre-biological -bio world, there are no enzymes. How does it check it? And every time, whatever it's using to check it, whatever system is needed to check it, is more complex than the system that it's checking. <laughs> so where'd you get that from? Nobody knows. Everybody's clueless on this. But nobody wants to admit it. You're going along and you want to build and you say, oh, I'm just near life. If you have one thing wrong, it doesn't work. So, well, you just modify this and it'll work. All right, go back to the beginning. Go back a billion years to the beginning. It's too hard. Nobody knows how this thing is solved. You can't build the molecules. Next slide. And then, so remember, these just to make the molecules, the simple molecules. You, you, you got to have the carbohydrates. You, you, you have to have the lipids. You have to have the, the nucleic acids. You have to have the proteins. Even if you make an amino acid, how do you hook the amino acids together? Amino acids don't hook together by themselves. We're not even talking about order. How do you just get them to hook? I mean, somebody sent me a paper just last night. I mean, here's a paper just came out on self-folding molecules. 
Well, duh, that doesn't prove anything. You build a molecule, it folds up. Big deal. How do you get these things to hook together in the first place? Nobody knows. That's, that's with amino acids. How about with, with nucleotides? You want to get these things to hook up. People will make a new... Oh, you see, we got a nucleotide. We, we got DNA. No, you don't have DNA. You got to get these nucleotides to hook up. Look at a DNA synthesizer. How many steps of blocking, protection, deprotection you need to do the complex chemistry just to get one linkage made? Nobody knows. How. You can throw all these together in a flash. People say, well... The concentration of nucleotides was very high. I've read this in high school books. It was very high. And these things came together. The, you calculate the concentration, the world would have to be raining nucleotides. And even if it were raining nucleotides at those concentrations, they wouldn't hook up. They don't hook up. You need enzymes to hook them up. But this is prebiotic. There's no enzymes here. Or you need very complex DNA synthesizers. Those weren't there either on early Earth. Then you publish a paper claiming that the synthetic, vesicle, the synthetic vesicle is a protocell and suggestive of early forms of life. Engage with the media, hype it up, watch the layperson be misled. Every assembly experiment I'm telling you can be summarized in this. Whatever you send me, don't send me anymore. I, I, I've dealt with it all, all right? I get enough of them. And people say, well, what about this one? What about this one? And it fits all into this. It's all garbage, all garbage. Next slide. If you just take... Nucleotides, if you just take DNA, DNA, oh, DNA is so complex and it has so much information. Look, if you have six A bases, A, 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 how can you arrange those? What are the different ways you can arrange it? Just that one, A, 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 that's it. It's one way you can arrange six bases. Look at carbohydrates. If you just take the carbohydrate D-pyranose, just a standard carbohydrate, just D-pyranose, you have six of those. It has over one trillion ways it can assemble. One trillion ways it can assemble, just with six of them. These have much more than six. And if it's not assembled right, guess what? The cell dies. You change any one of the carbohydrates, it re results in cell death. There is much more information stored in carbohydrate assembly than in DNA. Yeah, much more information can be stored in carbohydrates. You want to build a massive computer? Build it based on carbohydrate assembly. Much better than DNA assembly. It's just a carbohydrate assembly is really hard to control. Nobody knows how to control this. Nobody. But somehow, on a prebiotic earth, with nobody around, under a rock, <laughs> it figured this out. How do origin of life researchers address this problem? They don't. They don't. Next slide. 